So what you can do for the Lambda sensors, you can buy these little bosses. Um, they're pretty well a standard size, I think. Well, certainly most of them are this Bosch Lambda sensor. Um, and the idea is, is you, you cut a hole in your exhaust where you want it to be. Um, you want it to be as close to the engine as possible, but it'll be fine here. Uh, cut a hole in and weld that in place. It's easy as that. So let's get going on that one now. So we need to tape up the ends. I'm going to purge in that end. I'm not going to bother putting a hole right in because I don't care what's in there really. There's two little holes in there. And I'll get my purge. Okay, so this will need to wipe down my isotope. So I think I'm pretty well ready to rock and roll. I've cleaned it all. I've got my purge pipe in. I've got my filler rod to hand. Welding mask on. Put glove on so my hand doesn't get too hot. And fingers crossed. Finding with this weld, one of the hardest things is actually getting into a good position. I guess the people who are really good at this can do all this kind of stuff standing on their head. Okay, I just found it. The filler rod's so long, it's hitting the back of the bench, and I can't manoeuvre the filler rod. I guess this is all part of learning, isn't it? I wouldn't even think about things like that. So 
So I've done this without thinking again, and I'm going to have real difficulty getting around the back of that. So I managed to get all the way around on this. Hopefully that's going to work okay. Uh, I've just got a tiny bit of welds gone inside, so I just need to clean that thread now. So whilst I've got the exhaust off, just having a little peer up here. Just to make sure nothing horrendous looks like it's gone on with the turbo and it looks okay. So I'm just going to put the wastegate bit back together properly. It's all just kind of loose at the moment so I could easily undo it when I was trying to do the pipe because uh, it was on off, on off, on off. And basically all, all it is, is that, that comes from the engine and that sits in the way. You have, going into here, you have a um, pipe off the pressure side of the turbo. So that goes, pushes onto this space underneath the diaphragm. And as the pressure builds up, it pushes, there's a spring on here. It pushes up and opens, and that's how you control the boost pressure. Um, it's kind of very simple. I, I, from what I can make out, these things haven't changed for for a long, long time. I, um, I was looking into doing it electronically, and at the moment I'm a bit puzzled as to why it's not done electronically. Um, you can buy controllers, but they're about, I think the tally one was like over a thousand quid. So I must be missing the point somewhere. There must be a reason. If anyone knows the reason, can you tell me? Because I know it's the, obviously the heat thing with electronics, but if you had a fairly long control bar, you can keep the electronics well away. Um, from the heat source so why don't we just attach a stepper motor or something onto the end of there to control that going up and down if you know I'd love to I'd love to hear because it just seems such an obvious solution to me generally with obvious solutions to me there's an obvious reason why not, but I've just never thought of. It's not like these are cheap. I mean, this thing here, albeit American-made and probably overpriced because of it, I think they're, they're several hundred quid. And if you want to change the boost pressure, you have to take the cap off and change the spring, which is... I mean, not too big a deal, but with electronic, you could easily have it controlled with different boost in different gears as well. A little bit of good old fire gum around everything. Given this exhaust a good old wrap, put that in in its new place.
just make sure I get the angle right and then pinch it all up. 